This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the uh, second lecture on books of prime entry. And in the first lecture, we've been through and made a note of every transaction in one of these four books. But remember, although we've now got to the end of the month, but we haven't done any debits credits at all. However, before we start thinking about the debits credits, although we don't need the T accounts until the end of the month, it's only the end of the month that we produce financial statements at all, one thing we do need to keep a check on, from day to day in fact, is how much we owe suppliers and how much customers owe us. For instance, part way through the month, Anne, who was one of our customers, may ring us and wants to check how much she owes us. Well, this was a tiny example. It won't take us too long to find out. Um, if we look at the sales day book, we know how much we sold her, 2,100. But we then have to check, has she paid us any money so far? And we can find out in the cash receipts book, has she paid us any money? Yes, she's paid us 1,000. So she still owes us 1100 Now that was easy enough here, but appreciate in real life, there have been thousands of sales on credit. You know, we may have sold to Anne 10 times and we're going down a huge list. Oh, there's an Anne, there's an Anne, there's an Anne. And then we're looking at the receipts. Oh, where was it? Um, the receipts. All right, any receipts from a customer will be in the payable, a receivables column, and we've only got one here. It was a tiny example. But in real life, there could have been thousands of receipts, and you'd be going down a huge list looking to see were any of them from Anne. And so in real life, it's going to be ridiculous. You know, the customers rung up. They want to know instantly. They don't want to wait half an hour while we go down great long lists of figures and maybe miss some anyway. And similarly, it may be time to pay somebody. You know, it may be we, uh, Chris, we're due to pay Chris part way through the month. And how much do we owe him? Well, from the purchase day book, we know how much we bought from him. From the cash payments book, we know if we've paid him anything. But again, in real life, with thousands of entries, it's going to be ridiculous going down great long lists. And so, we actually employ two more bookkeepers just to keep a note, day by day, of how much we owe our suppliers and how much we are owed by our customers. First of all, customers we'll have a book where we keep a note of how much customers owe us. And it's called the receivables ledger. Ledger's another word for book. Or I'm afraid there's another name as well, which isn't as obvious. It's, the other name is the sales ledger. And as you'll see, the purpose of this book, whatever we call it, and I'm sorry, it's not me who invented these names, it's to keep a note, and only a note, of how much each customer owes us. Now, it is only a note. I've seen companies that keep a note on, have little cards for each customer and make a note every time we sell or every time we receive cash. More likely, it's a book, and of course, the book has double pages. And so we effectively have a T account for each customer. The customers on credit were Anne, Edwina, Andrew, Tony, and George. So we'll have pages for Anne. 
Edwina, Andrew, who else was there? I think Tony and George, I'll check in a minute. Am I right? Anne, Edwina, Andrew, Tony and George, yeah. Uh, but I can't stress enough, even though usually these would be pages in a, a book, and therefore they look like tea accounts, they are not double entry. They are note only. And what happens is day by day, every time we sell on credit, we listed it in the sales journal or sales day book, and at the same time, we'll make a note in the receivables of the sales ledger. So we sold to Anne for 2,100. Make a note on Anne's page. And we'll put it on the debit side because that's normally where we put receivables. But it's not a real debit and certainly there's no credit. Now there's no rules about what you write against it. I'll put SJ for sales journal. Because if we ever needed to check that figure, ah, it was in the sales journal. And similarly for all of them, Sir Edwina, make a note, she owes us 350. Uh, Andrew, 700. Tony, 1350. George, 2,100. So those notes, those entries have been made as soon as we made the sale. When you sell to Anne, it's listed in the sales journal. Immediately, you put 2,100 on Anne's page. And similarly, every time we receive cash from a customer, when we receive cash, It was listed in the cash receipts book. And cash from credit customers was analysed to the receivables column. And so, every time we receive cash from a receivable, here and a thousand. At the same time, we'll make a note on Anne's page that we received a thousand. I'll write against it CRB for cash receipts book. It doesn't matter, but simply because that's where we check uh, if something had gone wrong. And so because we're keeping that record day by day, it does mean that if ever a customer rings up and wants to check how much they owe us, fine, we put them through to this bookkeeper. They can turn up the page and find out immediately. Edwina, ah, she owes us 350. Anne, ah, she owes us 1100, and so on. Now, at the end of the month, of course, we know how much each owes us, because maybe we want to write them letters at the end of the month. Um, Edwina, Andrew, Tony, George, no point in taking a balance. We know exactly what they owe us. Anne, how much does she owe us at the end of the month? The balance is 1100. Fine. For about the tenth time, and I'm sorry, but it's so important, these are not realty accounts. You know, there's no double entry, they're simply a note. But Albert made it clear why in real life we need that note so that it, on any day, if ever we need to check how much they owe us, we can find out instantly. In exactly the same way, we'll keep a record uh, for suppliers on credit. We'll call this the payables ledger, which is a sensible name. Or the other name is the purchase ledger. But appreciate 
This book, whatever we call it, is just keeping a note of how much we owe our suppliers. And so we'll have a page for each supplier on credit. In the, who was selling us on credit? There was Chris, William and Bertha. And how are we going to keep the note of how much we owe people? Well, uh, every time we bought on credit, it was listed in the purchase journal, the purchase day book. And so every time we make a purchase on credit, list it here. And at the same time, put it on the relevant page in the payables ledger. So Chris 400. Fine, we'd enter 400 on Chris's page. I'll put it on the credit side, as we always do for a payable. But remember, there's no debit. This isn't double entry, it's only a note. And I'll write against it, not there are any rules, but I'll write PJ. Because if I ever needed to check that I got the right number, we'd look in the purchase journal. Uh, what else have we two at once? 800 to Chris and 600 to William. So another 800 to Chris and 600 on William's page. What else? Ah, another 1,000 to William and 1,600 to Bertha. So day by day, we'd be entering on the relevant page how much we owed for a purchase on credit. Now finally, of course, we also need to make a note day by day of whenever we paid anybody. And so we find that from the cash payments book. Did we make any payment to our payables? Remember, we'd look in the payables column because that's where we'd have analysed any payments to suppliers on credit. And although in real life there are likely to be thousands of payments here, there's only the one, which was to Chris of 900. Nine hundred. Um, cash payments book, CPD. And again, you see, see why this is so important. If you remember earlier on, that 900, it was because we paid three quarters of what we owed Chris. And here, because it was a short example, we had no problem finding out what we owed him. But in real life, there could have been thousands of purchases from Chris. We may already have made several payments to him. And it would have taken ages in real life to find out what we owed him. But with this book here, Turn to his page. We could see instantly, ah, we owed him 1,200. Pay three quarters, we paid 900. And so at the end of the month, how much were we owing each supplier? Uh, Chris, the amount still owing was 300. William, the amount owing the full 1600. And of course, Bertha, we don't need to strike a balance. She's owed 1600. So there we are. Remember where we are so far. We've done no double entry at all. No debits, no credits. But two things have happened. Firstly, we've had a record of every single transaction in one of these four books. Cash receipts, cash payments, purchases on credit, sales on credit. Every transaction has been recorded as it happened, day by day. We have two more books, uh, the receivables or sales ledger, the payables or purchase ledger, where we're keeping a record for each customer on credit 
as to how much uh, they're owing us. Uh, and in the payables ledger, a record for each supplier on credit of how much we owe them. Uh, and I'd better say before I go any further, if you're starting to get worried about all the work doing this, never ever in the exam can you actually be asked to write up these books. But you will be tested in various ways that you know what the books are. So the only way you can really be certain that what these various books are and what they're for is by me going through an example like this. And at the end, I will give you a summary, uh, which may help you remember them. Anyway, we've recorded every transaction. We know how much um, each customer owes us and how much we owe each supplier. Now we're in a position to do the debits credits. Well, again, uh, I don't like the lectures getting too long. So if you are doing this with me, keep what you've done. But in the next lecture, we'll see what happens at the end of the month when we do our double entries.